Yes. Joel, you've spent a lot of time around the world, uh, China, India, Africa. Uh, in many ways, the world you work with is the world that we hope turns democratic and not turns to understand what it means to be a, uh, an entrepreneurial economy. Yet, uh, with what you just heard, domestic agenda alone, plus Ukraine, this, the developing world could fall off the agenda entirely, yeah. or certainly hard. So what do you think? What's your view of the situation from your perspective, moving as you do Algeria, Dakar, and other places? Well, thank you uh, for, 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 for inviting me today. I'm very, uh, very happy to discuss, uh, first of all, expectations on new presidents. Uh, I happen to be French, and we're very good at expecting too much from presidents. Uh, we do that from our presidents, uh, uh, and we do that especially also on uh, U.S. presidents. We expect maybe too much on U.S. presidents, especially when they're, when they're Democrats. So I like your question about turning... Democrat and uh, democratic, but maybe Democrat as well. Uh, I think what part of the developing world I'm, I'm working with, but also part of the progressive world in, in Europe is expecting from uh, American presidents lies on two things. First of all, climate change initiatives, leadership. And second, uh, to give, I would say, clarity in international relations. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll go through bullet points maybe on those two aspects. Yeah. On climate change, uh, you've mentioned the huge uh, 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 energy program on the domestic aspects. That's for the contribution of the U.S. to the world to fighting the climate change. And that's very welcome. I think two additional things are still expected uh, in some sense. Uh, the climate finance, the climate finance at the level, at the global level, is still under uh, shaping, both for uh, uh, mitigation that concerns Europe. We have this Fit for 50, this Fit 55 uh, package. Uh, we're talking about carbon tax, but that concerns the developing world as well. Sometimes not so much because they say, you know, I think this is an old story when they used to say, no, we're not historically responsible. Now they have more finer argu arguments saying that they're already on low carbon path and development. So I think that here we have a need that the North, uh, that's Europe, plus the US, discusses with the developing, uh, the developing states and, and some emerging countries, which are no longer for talking about the emerging countries on this low carbon path. And the second point, which is might be missing in the conversation on climate change, is the industry. Uh, having climate change, uh, fighting climate change, having uh, transition paths. It's not just about adding new renewables, it's also about a whole transition, it's about new technologies, it's about new industries. Europe is and it has an industrial trajectory. The US have. Uh, both our regions have de-industrialized to uh, the countries you mentioned, some of the developing and emerging countries. I think there is a promising trend whether uh, 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 the White House is Republican or Democrat. Uh, we ought to work more in terms of industry cooperations, not just competition. Competition is fair, but programs cooperation is fine. That's for climate change. Mm -hmm. The second on clarifying the, uh, the, the international agenda, and as we talk about Ukraine, I think it's very important. We saw two Joe Biden, I would say. The first Joe Biden came to us uh, and said, we want to care again for our allies. And we spoke about NATO. And uh, when we spoke about NATO, everyone in Europe expected to talk about Russia. But Joe Biden came and talked about China. Not so much Russia. Not so long ago, a year ago. And kind of gave the sense to some European leaders uh, that uh, the vision that the uh, U.S. had on China was the kind of main vision to have and that continuing the discussion with China, especially on public goods and climate change, even that would be difficult. So that created some kind of, 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 of issue with this first Joe Biden. Now comes the second Joe Biden, with whom we are much more aligned uh, uh, on, on Ukraine. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, and I skipped 
because you've been in the Navy. I skipped the episode on AUKUS. I think on AUKUS we can work together. Uh, submarine contracts are nothing compared to global security. Uh, the French have got that, I think, and, and <coughs> there is a need of a strong discussion on AUKUS being extended. But back to what we see in Ukraine, and that will be my last point, my last bullet point. What we've seen, I would say, uh, and I hope I don't have too much of French glasses on that, we've seen that, in a sense, the leadership has been uh, European in terms of accelerating the measures, in terms of uh, making them maybe stronger than what the White House would have wanted to do or what, uh, uh, what uh, Wall Street would have wanted. And I, I don't think it's bad. I think that the consequence is double. The EU and NATO are closer, and the NATO can have two feet. And I think a NATO with two feet would be more balanced. 